Welcome back to Real Estate 101. Today we're going to continue our discussion on family law and talk a little bit about the, the Ontario joined once again by John Schumann of Devery Smith Frank. John, welcome back to the show. It's great to be back, Joe. All right, John. So what is the role of the Children's Aid Societies? Well, Children's Aid Societies have a few roles, but the one that most people are familiar with are their uh, child welfare or child protection role, which is keeping children safe. And they do that for the most part with regard to children's parents or children in the care of guardians. Right. They do it a bit for uh, um, institutional care. and For example, daycares, they can invest, investigate daycares. However, they do not investigate uh, children's aid to side, or child welfare uh, inside schools. That's sort of under the Ministry of Education role. Um, but where most people run into them is if someone's concerned about whether children are safe in a parent's care. Okay, so do they monitor... Um, children, or do they just check in to see if, you know, the, the children are safe? No, children's aid societies have no monitoring function at all. They're not like the police where they uh, cruise the streets looking for children to see if they're okay. Right. So if a children's aid society has come to your door, it's because someone's tipped them off to something. And they uh, do re re completely rely on those tips. They rely on the tips of professionals. Any professional who has a, you know, a role with children inside their profession has the duty to report anytime they think a a child is in danger or a child is out of a legal obligation, but often societies find out without getting these tips, children's aid societies would not know if a child was living in a crack house or not being fed or, or was being beaten at home. They rely completely on people uh, giving them tips and then going out investigating those tips. Okay. Now, do they have much power when they are investigating possible abuse or neglect? Yeah, children's aid societies have a lot of power because they've been given a lot of power because their role is to protect children, and that seemed to be important. And so they have a lot more power than even the police do. For example, the children's aid societies have the right to go and interview people to find out whether a child is safe. Right. They have the right to look at documents in relation to that child, often without a court order, although sometimes they, they may require one, but often they can just go get those documents. They have the ability to speak to children without their parents' consent to find out what's going on with the children or someone the child knows. They have the ability to actually go and apprehend a child, take a child into foster care without getting a judge's permission first or even convincing a judge it's, it's warranted. If a children's aid society worker thinks that a, a, per, a child is in imminent danger, they have the right to go out and get that child without court approval, which is something the police could never do. And the... Uh, the last thing is they have the right when they're actually picking up a child to d enter onto private property and do a search of that property to find the child and make sure a child's safe. If they're worried, they may have to apprehend that child. Again, the police would require a warrant a to warrant. do that. Okay, so what should parents do if they find out that Children's Aid Society is investigating them? Okay. Well, the most important thing is to cooperate cooperative with them. It makes a very, uh, it's very important to uh, make a good first impression, but uh, children's aid societies, because they have so much power, can often do investigation, and if you don't cooperate, then you look like you are just trying to hide something, or you're being unfriendly, or you're being mean, and you're the type of per mean person who would not only be mean to a children's aid society worker, but be mean to kids. Kids, right. So that's why it's also very important to make a uh, first impression. And you also have to uh, let them speak to your kids if you're if they want to speak to your kids. You should let them see your house and tour around their house, and you should you know give them some information about your kids and be open in in, in speaking with them, because anytime you, they think you may be hiding something, then they're going to be more suspicious about what's going on with you and your family, and perhaps that your children are in danger. All right. So to touch on that, is there anything parents should do? or can do if they want to speak with your kids. No, there's nothing parents should do or can do. They're allowed to speak to your kids. And if you try to coach your kids or prompt your kids or tell your kids what to say, and the Children's Aid Society worker, when I mean, a lot of them are trained in, in interviewing children. Right. And so if they pick up on the fact that kids have been coached or told what to say, then they're going to get suspicious that someone's hiding something, and that'll make things worse. So it's better just to let your kids be relaxed and tell the, let them speak to the worker and tell them what's going on. Anything else can just get you into more trouble. Okay, so I know you said to be cooperative, but a lot of this sounds a little bit intrusive, right? So is there anything parents maybe shouldn't do? Uh, yeah, there's a few things you shouldn't do, and you have to be very uh, careful about not being cooperative, because I said right. uh, making a first impression is important. 
but also not going to jail is important. <laughs> right. So if you, uh, if the Children's Aid Society is investigating uh, something that could be a criminal charge, like that you've assaulted a child or assaulted someone else, or you've threatened death or done any sort of that ser- sort of serious thing, and the Children's Aid Society is asking specific questions about that, then you really need to have a lawyer present. You have a right not to incriminate yourself, right. but Children's Aid Societies share everything you say with the police in those circumstances. And you go ahead and say something that incriminates you, the Children's Aid Society is going to tell the uh, police officers, and then that's going to be used against you in court. So if you're talking about something that could be lead to criminal charges, you have to get a lawyer involved for the interview. Otherwise, you run a big in big jeopardy. And any criminal lawyer will tell you you don't speak to the police unless, well, you don't speak to a police, period, when they're investigating you. But when your kids, they may take your kids away if you don't speak with the uh, police. You have to balance that. And the only way to balance that is if you speak to a, uh, a lawyer and have a lawyer there for the interview. The other thing you shouldn't do is you sometimes uh, children's aid societies want you to sign a, uh, um, an agreement for to have your kids in care or to help provide services. You should never sign an agreement with the children's aid society unless you've spoken to a lawyer about it first. These are legal agreements. They're legal contracts between you and the children's aid society, and they usually give the children's aid society even more power than the children's aid society would already have with, with respect to you. All right. And they are enforceable. And they are enforceable. And if you, if you don't abide them, they can, Children's Aid Society can take you to court for breaching them. So you, and because they are an enforceable agreement, a forcible legal contract, you should never sign any enforceable legal contract without speaking to a lawyer to make sure you understand it, especially in this area, because chances are you don't unless you have history with the Children's Aid Society. You don't know what their powers are and what right. they can do and can't do. So you should speak to a lawyer before you sign any sort of agreement. Okay. Are there... Other times when you should speak with a lawyer when dealing with CAS? Well, if the Children's Aid Society come and they apprehend your kids, it is absolutely critical that you speak to a lawyer like right away. As, as soon as the, you know, they leave with the kids, you need to get in touch with a lawyer right then. The, court, the Children's Aid Society has to have your case in court within five days of apprehending kids and putting them in foster care. And there's a lot you can do to better your case within those five days. There's a lot of work to be done, and you can really uh, do a lot to get your kids out of the Children's Aid Society care, either into uh, another family member's care or back into your care, but you have to do it really fast. And lawyers have busy caseloads and things like that. They need some time, and it's also a ton of work to do this properly. Right. So you need to get the lawyer involved right away. before the, like, As soon as the Children's Aid Society leaves, start looking for a lawyer and trying to get one on your side and make the first appointment you can get. Okay, so do parents have rights when dealing with CAS? Well, if you go to CAS court, a, a judge will tell you that, that the Child and Family Services Act is not a parent's rights uh, statute. Mm-hmm. It's a children's child protection statute. But there, the Children's Aid Society cases, because it's the state, like the province of Ontario, against you, the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms does apply. And so you do have rights, but if you try to enforce those rights, you might get the draw the ire of a judge and not get what you want unless you do it in a child-focused way. So when you're talking about rights, you are not shouldn't be talking about your rights so much. Mm-hmm. You should be talking about what is best for the children and how the Children's Aid Society not abiding by those rights is, uh, affects the children. So, for example, if things take too long, the Court of Appeal has said that delay can be a breach of a charter right in, uh, in child protection cases. And kids, you know, their lives are short. Things take a long time. Being in foster care can be bad. The longer that takes, the worse it is for the kids. Kids have a right to not have things delayed. So taking it from that perspective is helpful. You also have a right to disclosure from the Children's Aid Society, and that's actually your charter right, which means you're allowed to see the society's file. And you should see the society's file to understand what's going on. And again, that is so the parents can understand what the concerns are so they can meet them. Because what you want to take as, as your position is not that your rights are being violated, but you want to make sure that you have the best possible plan for the kids and the only way you're going to know that is if you have disclosure School. from the society. So in those ways, you have to, so you have rights, but you have to make them child, or apply them in a child-focused way. All right. So are there rights that p- parents should enforce or would doing anything get, just get them into trouble? Well, enforcing their rights, as I said, would get them into trouble. But enforcing the rights in a way that is child-focused and considers the child is very helpful. So, as I said, the right of disclosure so they understand the society's case, that's important. Parents need to enforce that. 
the right of having a speedy hearing and getting things moving along quickly. Also very important for the kids. So parents saying they need things to move along quickly, that's child focused. Parents should have a right of access. That means they get to see their kids, except unless they are going to absolutely harm their kids at, at, at if they're left alone with children for even a second, mm -hmm. I mean, there may be supervised access, but it's important for kids to see their parents. I mean, the parents are probably the most important people in the children's life, and they have a link to those parents, and they need to be able to have contact with those parents ongoing. And so if children are taken away from you, you need to insist on having a, you know, a right of access to the children, or actually it's the children's right of access to you, because that's what's important. But enforcing that is something that is very important for the children, and it gives them some con continuity too, and that's something that's not going to get you into trouble. The same is the there is a sort of a, children have a right to be connected with their family and their community besides their parents. Mm -hmm. So the children should like the children they another family member or with a community with in more familiar surroundings and keeps them uh, sort of a link to their background. Mm -hmm. And so that is also very important. And that's something that right from the beginning, as soon as you speak to a lawyer. If the children are taken away from you, you should be trying to find family members or community members who can adequately care for the children. All right. So what is the most important thing for parents to know um, if CAS is in their life? Well, you need to get together with a, a child protection worker right away and come up with a plan. And you have to be able to show that your plan to keep the child safe from whatever the dangers are that are that are alleged or may be present, even if they're not present, but as the judge is going to assume they are until there's a full trial. You need to show that your plan to protect the children is better than the Children's Aid Society's plan. And that's and doing that, putting that plan together, takes some time and some effort and some and, and doing getting some logistics organized and getting people involved. So that's why you need to contact a child protection lawyer right away, as soon as you know you may be in trouble with the Children's Aid Society. All right, John, great stuff. For people watching and listening who uh, may want to get in touch, how can they reach you? You can reach me at my phone number, which is 416-446-5080, at our website, which is devrylaw.ca. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Twitter at at Schumann, uh, Fan Law, and you can also find me on LinkedIn. All right, John, great stuff. Thanks for coming on today's show. It's great to be back, Joe. So there you have it. If you're looking for a top family lawyer, get in contact with John Schumann of Devry Smith Frank. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like, comment, and share our videos. I'm Joe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.